If you intend to keep your job as a React developer, then you must avoid these 5 mistakes while using the use state hook in order to prevent you from losing your job. The first one is simple, that is, not initializing the state. When using use state, it's important to provide an initial value for the state variable, otherwise, it will be undefined. This can cause unexpected behavior or errors when trying to use the state variable in your code. Here's an example of not initializing the state in a React component. In this example, the count state variable is not initialized when it is declared using use state. This can lead to unexpected behavior or errors when trying to use the count variable in the handle click function. For example, trying to add 1 to undefined will result in nan. To fix this issue, we should initialize the state with a default value in the following manner. In this updated example, we initialize the count state variable to 0. So now, when we click the increment button, the count state variable will be incremented correctly. Now the second mistake to avoid is calling use state conditionally. The React docs itself says to not call hooks inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. Instead, always use hooks at the top level of your React function, before any early returns. By following this rule, you ensure that hooks are called in the same order each time a component renders. That's what allows React to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple use state and use effect calls. Now there's a good example explaining this in the docs as well. Let's say we have the following component having two use states and two use effects. The subsequent rendering of the component would look like this. It says first and second render because the component itself is rendered only once, but the rendering process can consist of multiple phases. So now, for this example, this is the order React expects our components to follow on every re-render. Because on every render, it compares with the previous re-render and based on that it makes some changes, right? So React relies on the order in which hooks are called. But what happens if we put a hook call, for example the persist form effect, inside a condition? The name not equal to condition is true on the first render, so we run this hook. However, on the next render, the user might clear the form, making the condition false. Now that we skip this hook during re-rendering, the order of the hook calls become different. You can see the second use effect is skipped. So, React wouldn't know what to return for the second use state hook call because React expected that the second hook call in this component is related to the persist form effect, just like during the previous render. Because as I said before, React compares the current render with the previous render and based on that updates what's required. So basically, from that point, every next hook call after the one we skipped would also shift by one, leading to bugs. In this example, I used a use effect within the if condition. You could use a use state within if condition and it would throw similar issues. So the bottom line is, avoid calling any hook inside loops, conditions or nested functions. Now the third mistake to avoid is mutating the state directly. React state should never be mutated directly. Instead, you should always use the setState function that is returned by the useState hook to update the state. Mutating the state can cause unexpected behavior and make it difficult to debug issues. In the example shown, the handle click function is directly mutating the count state variable instead of using the set count function to update the state. This can cause unexpected behavior, as the component does not re-render when the state is directly mutated. As a result, the console output will always be zero, even though the button is clicked multiple times. To fix this, you should use the set count function to update the state. In this example, the handle click function uses the set count function to update the count state variable. This ensures that the component re-renders with the updated state and the count reflects the correct count value. Now the fourth mistake is using too many state variables. While use state can be a powerful tool, it's important to use it sensibly. Using too many state variables can make your code difficult to reason about and debug. Instead, consider using other React features like context or reducers to manage more complex state. For example, let's say you're building a form with multiple fields that need to be validated before submission. You could create a separate state variable for each field's value and validation status. While this approach works, it can quickly become unwieldy and hard to maintain as the number of fields and validation rules increases. In this case, you might want to consider using a state management tool like Redux, use context or use reducer hook to manage the form state and validation logic in a more centralized and scalable way. To make the code cleaner using the use reducer hook, you can create a reducer function that will handle the different state transitions. The use reducer hook takes in the reducer function and an initial state as arguments and returns an array with two elements, the current state and a dispatch function. The example on the screen properly demonstrates how you can refactor the code to use use reducer. Using use reducer makes the code cleaner and more readable as it separates the state management from the rendering logic. 
It also reduces the number of state variables and eliminates the need for multiple useState and setState functions. Now the fifth mistake is not using the functional update form of setState. When updating state based on the previous state, you should always use the functional update form of setState. This ensures that you're working with the most up-to-date state and helps prevent race conditions that can occur when updating state asynchronously. Here's an example where multiple state updates are triggered asynchronously and as a result, the count value may not be the latest version. In this example, when the increment function is called, it sets a timeout for one second and then calls setCount with the current value of count plus one. Similarly, when the decrement function is called, it sets a timeout for 500 milliseconds and then calls set count with the current value of count minus 1. The problem with this code is that the count value may not be the latest version when the state update occurs. This is because the set timeout function causes the state updates to happen asynchronously after the current render cycle has finished. So if the user clicks the increment button multiple times quickly, each timeout will capture the current value of count at the time it was called and not at the time the state update actually occurs. This can lead to unexpected behavior such as the count not being incremented by the expected amount. So even if I try to increment the number multiple times, the number actually only incremented by one number, despite of how many times I clicked the button. To fix this issue, we can use the functional update form of set count to ensure that we are always working with the latest version of the state. In this version, we are passing a function to set count that takes the previous state as an argument and returns the new state based on that previous state. This ensures that we are always working with the latest version of the state, even if multiple state updates are triggered asynchronously. So these were the five React use state mistakes that you should avoid at any cost, otherwise even God wouldn't forgive you for your sins. That's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more.